saying get right get right church we're going to just go into a prayer and we're going to begin to we're just going to begin this session this is a uh, the original sabbath day hour starting at it will be starting at 6 p.m. or sundown on friday all the way to sundown saturday saturday um, evening that is the uh, this is the eve of the Sabbath that we are uh, coming upon right now. The eve of the Sabbath, Friday night. The Lord says, "Remember the Sabbath day and make it keep it holy." Um, and so this is like the original Sabbath uh, time for us to gather together, people to to gather together, and and uh, as we pray, think about everything you've been through during this uh, week. During the five-day week, uh, excuse me, uh, the seven-day week or the six-day week, and coming into the seventh day, um, just uh, praying here. We're going to pray. We're going to call on the name of Jesus Christ, and we're going to ask the Lord to lead and guide us during this time. Uh, this time is a time of repentance. So we're going to come to you, Father. We come to you right now, Heavenly Father, in the sweet name of Jesus Christ, asking you to please look down on us. Look upon our weak, Father. Look on, up down upon the good things we've done and the bad things we've done. Please, Lord, forgive us. Have mercy on us and forgive us for all of the wrong we've done, all the, the bad seeds we've planted. Uh, uproot the bad seeds that we may have unwittingly planted uh, Assuming that we were planting good things this week. Father, forgive us for, for what we've done wrong, what we know we've done wrong, and what we don't even know we've done wrong. Open us up. Send, wash us and cleanse us on the inside with your blood, Lord Jesus. And uh, send down that anointing. and Anoint us on the inside with the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. That we would be open to, to doing your will and suppressing our own and showing to you that we love you and we we really long to be with you and we're willing to even go against uh, the, the desires of our own flesh in order to continue to live a righteous life before you and please give us the strength to continue to do so and the wisdom to continue to do so and to continue to go out and and preach unto the unbelievers and teach people who uh, really want to be with you when you come back what they must do 
and what they must specifically what they must repent from. Uh, please lead and guide as we go on an adventure into your holy word. Lead and guide us in your power and presence that you know good fruit might be produced out of this good uh, Sabbath Eve time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so uh, what I have done, I've invited. I'd have invited, first of all, I've invited a lot of you to come here on uh, Skype, on my, on my Skype page. Let's see here. Hello, hello. I typed in two hello, hellos to, to bring the page up to today. Uh, I just put a, a Facebook invitation on, on uh, about inviting you to come join me on Skype. Hello, Miss Pat Woods. Uh, I would really love it if you wanted to interact with me on on the free Skype, if you can. Um, thank you for coming this way. I I would love for you to interact with me on the free Skype uh, that I just sent the uh, um, link up into into Facebook. I hope you I hope you received it, or else I know you received one of my links to go, to join me on Skype, and I'm on Skype right now, uh, the Daryl's Dream Ministry page. Uh, that link. Just click that link. Um, it's the free Skype. It's not the one that you pay for. Uh, just the chat service. And, you know, can ask me questions and, and things. I think, matter of fact, since I have you on on uh, Facebook uh, Live right here, one of the other uh, sermons that I did, you asked a question. I was. It was the sermon about uh, how Christ uh, is Alpha and Omega. And he does not share his uh, glory with anyone. And I was talking about Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny. And I think you, you asked a question. I, I, I got it a little later. You asked a question, which is a good question. You were asking about birthdays. And like I said, I'm not, as you would can say, I'm, I don't declare myself a Jehovah's Witness or anything like that. And I don't mean to offend anybody um, who is a Jehovah's Witness. For some reason, they have I don't know the clarity on that why they why they feel that birthdays um, celebrating the the day that, that that the Lord put you on earth we're celebrating Christmas is celebrating Christ's birthday <laughs> you know given that that uh, day in recognition to Christ if we're Christians given that rec day of recognition to Christ you know. Um, I don't see anything wrong with birthdays, celebrating your birthday. The reason when is because what I was preaching about, maybe some people interpreted the wrong way. What I was preaching about is that if we have reserved uh, December 25th as the day that Christ, that we celebrate Christ, then we should celebrate it for Christ. We shouldn't be celebrating that and calling ourselves Christians and having our children go sit on Santa Claus's lap because... The day is supposed to be reserved for, for celebrating Christ's birthday. I don't see anything wrong with celebrating God giving you another year of happiness on the planet. You know, in this life. I don't see anything wrong with that. You know, so if you're going to celebrate your birthday, you're celebrating your birthday. You know, how would you feel if, if it was your birthday? You know, I'm, of course you're not the only person born on the day you were born. But how would you feel if you were hosting a birthday party or somebody was hosting a birthday party and they said and then the invitation was let's go celebrate Pat Wood's birthday, for example. And then you get to the party, you all there, you know, you in the little birthday hats and everybody's in the birthday hats and, and then, you know, somebody and you know, you're getting ready to sing happy birthday to you. Oh, wait a minute. Let's interject. Wait a minute. It's not only her birthday. You know, we got you all together, but we, we decided that we're going to also celebrate, you know, Joe Johnson's birthday over here in the corner. <laughs> you know, after everybody sent out the invitation, they all thought they were going to celebrate Pat Wood's birthday. You know, in a sense like that, you know. So so here it is, you know, we, we say Jesus is the reason for the season. Let's celebrate. But I know that a lot of people call themselves Christian. They say, I'm going to send my children down to sit on Santa Claus' lap anyway, you know. And it's like, you know, so the, what I was just saying is that, you know, if we, 
if Jesus is Alpha and Omega, he's Alpha and Omega all by himself, and there's no need to include Santa Claus and tell children or tell people that Santa Claus should be included because it robs children of their innocence, which I don't understand that. How can, how can uh, giving full acknowledgement to Jesus Christ who died, on me, died for me on the cross and, and not wanting to include anybody else who really didn't do anything for me that could save my soul, rob a child of innocence. If, if anything, if you're going to lie to a child and tell them that Santa Claus is somebody important, that you should be you should be good because if you don't if you don't be good Santa Claus is not going to bring you toys on Christmas and you know you tell a child something like that you're basically lying to a child you know full well if the if the parents are the one going out there buying this stuff don't be attributing that to Santa Claus you're lying <laughs> so you know you talk about take away a child's innocence you take away a child's innocence by lying to to a child you know um, so. So I, that that's what I was uh, getting at, you know. Same thing with the Easter Bunny, which is really Resurrection Day. Sometimes we, I trip up. I come from that from a background where they said Easter, Easter all the time, and sometimes even I trip up myself. But I even have to remind myself it's Resurrection Day. You know, Easter is some German holiday that they try to put with it. Even the the hunting of the Easter eggs and all that kind of stuff. You know, it's like well, you know, people try to turn it into something. Christ like well it represents searching for Jesus when he left the tomb and that's why we hunt the eggs no it's not them, them eggs were being hunted way before Christianity ever got to Germany <laughs> and people was hunting those eggs because of the Easter bunny fertility bunny that's what that was for you know so you know and when the Roman Catholics came to that part of the world and they tried to introduce Christianity um, the people there in that Germanic part, in Norwegian, whatever, wherever they were, they kind of like refused to let go of the services for the Easter Bunny. So, unfortunately, the Catholics did, they made a compromise. They said, well, why don't we just change the reason for why you do these celebrations? And so no longer to, to, for honoring the Bunny of Fertility. Um, same thing with St. Patrick Day. You know, the people... In, the, the people who kidnapped St. Patrick, St. Patrick was, was just a, a Christian boy, grew up in a, in a, in a monastery, was, was being raised in a monastery. Um, the Vikings came down from Ireland. They were Vikings. And they came down and they, they killed everybody and kidnapped Patrick and took him back up, up to Ireland where they worshipped trees, four-leaf clovers. And they believed that at the end of a rainbow, God's rainbow, was a leprechaun with a big pot of gold that you had to go <laughs> was a leprechaun with a big pot of gold the end of the rainbow always landed somewhere in Europe somewhere or or in those lands that they were conquering that was the big pot of, pot of gold at the end of the rainbow where they would kill everybody and take their stuff back you know up there and in, into Ireland into Viking territory where they, where they worshipped Odin and Odin was the main god Thor you know was the was the was a god warhammer and um you know they committed a lot of human sacrifices uh for thor and other gods for odin they would this is how they would worship them trees old christmas tree what they would do is uh they captured the slaves and now if the slaves that they captured up there was any kind of rebellious those slaves wound up uh, as ornaments on the tree, uh, on Thor's tree. You know, slaves and, and sick people or whatever, they wound up hanging as ornaments on the tree. Very similar to how they hang ornaments. They try to tell you, if you look on Google and stuff, they'll say, well, they used to hang apples. Yeah, they hang apples and all that kind of stuff. You know why they hang the apples? To, to cut out the stench of the people hanging on the tree. You know, and then when when uh, even St. Patrick's Day, that's why they have still have the four leaf clover and all that kind of stuff. And they try to say it's something godly about it. No, it's not. That's the, that's that's what they were doing when they were worshiping the trees. And then when when they accepted Christianity, they still didn't want to let go of their old traditions. You know, so things like that. That's where the origin of of Santa Claus, Christmas trees, Santa Claus himself. They say it was a guy named Saint Nick. But if you look further back, 
um, it was, I think the god Odin, they had a, a saying that he would ride on some reindeer in the sky. That sleigh that Santa Claus is riding on, he would ride on some reindeer in the sky looking to the to devour people or, or something like that. Or, or he would bring... It wouldn't be uh, black coal if you put if you put it in. It changed that. It w it wouldn't be that if if uh, if Thor went and found um, not Thor, uh, Odin went riding on his reindeer and he found someone not being loyal to to him. He he was supposed to be the 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 supreme god Odin and Thor and all that kind of stuff. Uh, they if they found any children or anything like that. Uh, um. Uh, in disobedience to their particular type of laws or whatever they had, um, those children would be killed. You know, and in truth, that's just a fable thing, which which really was saying that the Vikings would go out and hunt down anybody, anybody that, any child or any family that began to be rebellious against their kings or whatever, of of their own people, uh, they would find themselves. Uh, ready to be sacrificed and, and put on those trees, you know, so uh, and hung up on those trees. And uh, we all know the thing about uh, this, uh, this, this other one coming up Halloween. Hollows means holy, ween actually means uh, without. It's a, a, a English dramatic word to mean without. So when you put those words together, it means without holiness, a day with. A day without holiness, um, and then you know they they say trick or treat, and the reason why they say trick or treat is because uh, people used to believe in those places where they where they thought it was Halloween night or Hallows All Hallows Eve, Halloween. Uh, the Roman Catholics tried to turn it into All Hallows Eve to, to stop the people from doing this, but um, people in farms and, and stuff like that would uh, believe that uh, ghosts or demons would come and want to take their their land away or their farms away or, or something like that. And so, first, what they tried to do, they, they figured... They figured, uh, well, we'll send our children out. And they literally did this, you know, adults, in fear of that night of Halloween, which it was really just some thieves, you know, and the people just fell for it. I mean, you know, they were, they believed that this as their, their religion. Uh, on that night, they would uh, come and raid people's farms and homes and all that kind of stuff. And they would say, you know, the ghosts, the people would believe that if you put your children out at night, like you put a cat out at night, if you put your children out on that night, the ghosts would harm your children, but leave you alive and wouldn't do anything to your farm. So now all these kids, young children, were put outside of the home because their parents was afraid of the ghosts, which were actually adults dressed in dressed in costumes child molesters that's what you, you might, might, might as well call them dressed in costumes and the children began to believe amongst themselves that if they start taking pumpkins you know a demon to chase out a demon so the children started saying well let's carve faces in pumpkins and do all that kind of stuff and set lights on them because this will scare the ghost away if they see these, uh, or or if anything, uh, Casper the Friendly Ghost or anything like that, if anything, we can dress up in costumes also and they'll think we're one of them. And they won't harm us because we'll dress up in costumes just like they do. And, you know, and they'll think we're, we're part of the party so we can go out and raid together with them and, and not be harmed ourselves. And that's where uh, Halloween, the trick-or-treat and... And going out and on these raiding parties and people knocking on your door and asking and demanding that you give them some candy right now. Well, after Christianity came to that part of the world, it was demanding that you give them candy. But these people would come and knock on your door and tell you they were thugs. 
and it would tell you it's time to give up your farm, give up your wife, give up your give up whatever we want. Give up your children, whatever we want, or we're gonna destroy your everything. We're gonna kill all of you off and destroy everything. That was um and so that's why, you know, they call it the devil's night and all that kind of stuff. So so people need to be more aware of what they're following and 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 uh and what they hold and say, well, I'm a Christian, but then they go out and trick or treat, right? We know that one, you know. Uh, they, I'm a Christian, but I'm going to, uh, I'm going to sing, here comes Santa Claus, uh, but even though Jesus is the reason for the season. I mean, you know, if you're not a Christian, if you're not a, a, a promoting yourself as a Christian, I mean, you know, that's between you and God what you want to do. But I'm, I, you know, I'm pretty much trying to get us Christians to know to learn and accept that um, there have been traditions brought down to us. You know, we, we, we stray away from the true message of the gospel. And like my last message uh, yesterday, where people are preaching a God spell, and I put that in quotes, instead of the, the, the true gospel, the reason why Jesus came, what Jesus told us we need to do to make sure that, you know, when he comes back that we're actually going to be with him he called us to repent from some things and how yesterday i was telling talking about how so many personal church or local churches and also you see on television a lot of people have watered down the true message of christ the true message of repentance uh to suit people's need of of making more money it all has something to do with um financial poverty they preach the gospel but they preach trust in God and 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 do these things in the name of Jesus Christ and and then he's going to bless you with finances beyond your wildest dreams to be able to take care of yourself here in this world and um be able to have a nice house and all that kind of stuff which I'm not knocking because that's true but a lot of what also what Jesus told us to do in order for, to make sure that we get into heaven is not being preached because uh, a lot of people and I'm just calling people to repentance I'm not calling people to to sh have their churches shut down and all that kind of stuff this is not fire and brimstone preaching or oh, woe is you kind of thing what this is is calling all brothers and sisters in Christ including myself to let's get real we, you know, we don't know when the next Hurricane, tornado, earthquake, natural disaster is going to hit. We don't know who is going to hit, um, but we need to make sure that that you know there's only two things that are going to happen to everybody. Either, and I say it to myself, either the Lord is going to take my spirit out of my flesh before He returns, or He's going to return. Jesus Christ is going to return before He takes my spirit out of my flesh. And that is the same thing for, for, from everybody. He told us when he returns that we need to be ready. We need to prepare ourselves now so that when he returns, he'll be ready. But so, so, so many years have gone by where, where, where people are more focused on how much money they're getting in, in the church. Because, yes, you have to keep your doors open. I got to keep... You know, I'm I'm not saying anything is wrong with that, but when that focus becomes the message, like like you know, when the focus becomes, we're only going to teach a message, we're only going to encourage the people to praise God, do this, that, and the other, but we're not going to speak about certain subjects, or or if if those subjects come up, we're going to give a wishy-washy answer instead of just directly telling people this is what Jesus said we need to repent from or he's not going to let us into heaven point blank you know and it's a, a wishy-washy thing you know okay but but as long as you keep that money coming in so we can keep our lights on and we can keep the church doors open or we want to go from a mega from a minor church to a mega church with a big building and the bigger the building the more money you're going to have to spend in that building to keep it keep it afloat and keep it in order and and that becomes the message that's being sent out christianity has something to do with everybody giving a tithe and offering so that they can get a bigger building a bigger building and more people can come in and praise god which is good 
However, if people's lie, if they're not really repenting from their, if they're not really repenting from their their personal sins, if they're not voluntarily repenting from the personal sins, that's what Jesus is talking about. I'm about to turn to Matthew chapter seven. Anybody, if you you think I'm just talking too much and y'all want to hear some scripture, you know, um, Matthew chapter seven, seven. All right, let me see. Yeah, okay, Matthew chapter 7, and then he says here uh, in verse, starting in verse 21, he says, Not everyone, and, and open up your Bibles and you know, follow along with me. Might not be word for word the same thing, but I just want to show you. It's all, it's all telling the same message here. Um, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, and listen to what, what, what's being said, because it is true. And think about what a lot of evangelists tell you on TV or even a lot of churches. Think about when they say, well, if you speak this into existence and you say it in Jesus' name, it will come. And it does come. And a lot of people are being uh, fooled by that in thinking that because I was poor last week, I only had a dollar in my bank account, and I listened to one of the pastors on, or the pre preachers on television. And they said, put faith in God and and you know understand it's a struggle and just you if you just call on Jesus name and you ask in Jesus name there'll be a whole bunch of money put in your account by by the end of the month and all that stuff it it can happen it, it does happen if you put your faith in it because why because Jesus already said you ask anything in my name he's the savior ask anything in my name and I'll give it to you but that doesn't necessarily mean he, he's doing that. He's still giving it to you because you asked in his name because he's not going to renege on his name. He's not going to lie. He didn't lie. So he's anything you ask in his name, you will receive. That does not necessarily mean that 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 um, the individual who asked in, in, in his name um, has repented and turned away from the things that he said repent from. And so that's why he says here, he says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord. Not everyone who praises me, all this stuff praises me. Not everyone who's asked things in my name will enter the kingdom of heaven. All right? So why are we doing all of this? I mean, you know, any of us who call ourselves Christians, ultimately, not just to have blessings here, but ultimately is when the day of judgment comes, we're thinking we're going to, we're going to, be accepted into into heaven we're thinking we're going to be accepted into heaven but something's wrong why does he say here as you as we continue to read why does he say many of you will say to me on that day lord lord did we not prophesy in your name preachers they was preaching in the name of jesus christ Right? Did we not drive out demons in your name? Drove out the demon of poverty. Driving out the demon of this, this, that, and the other. You know? Why is it saying that? We, didn't we do these things? We're confused. We, hold on a minute. You know, we, we did these things. We called, called demons to, to be gone in your name. How is it that we still did aren't able to get into heaven what is it what is it that's missing what what did we do was wrong right so, so did we not do mighty deeds in your name uh did i skip something drive demons out did we not do mighty deeds in my name then i will declare to them solemnly i never knew you depart from me you evildoers now They've been doing things in Jesus' name. Made a name for themselves too in Jesus' name. But why would Jesus, 
after they did all of this in his name, why would he tell them that they are still evildoers and it didn't really matter if they, they said, Lord, Lord, and they, they told everybody else in the public, Lord, Lord, this, that, and the other. And they had these big mega mega churches or, or these churches and these 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 uh, big churches and a whole bunch of people paying them money uh, for, for, for all con- kinds of things and come to their church and, and do all this other kind of stuff. Why? And I'm saying to all of you who are in that, all the pastors and preachers in that position, the reason why is because your message has become a God spell instead of the true gospel. Your message, all this money coming into y'all, maybe you didn't realize it. I'm not saying you did it on purpose, but lately, your ultimate message has been about about people's finances, which is not is, is not bad because you're helping people get out of poverty, okay. But but people are starting to equate that their lifestyle is okay, and that being blessed by God means and being true servants of Christ only means that I called, I spoke something in His name, and and I got money in my pocket now. What we know is a whole bunch of disobedient or non-believers, they got money in their pocket too. You know, I got money in my pocket right now. So can't nobody tell come and tell me that I'm still living wrong for Jesus. No matter what I do. And then they always put that, that thing with it. Well, Jesus died for you. Don't let nobody judge you or tell you that you, you ain't living right. And the proof is that look at all this money you, you've accumulated since you started calling on Jesus and asking Jesus. And it, it has something to do with money again. Money is a human tool. And they said, look at all this money you got. You know, whenever somebody say you ain't living right, just show them your bank account. You know, and that'll shut them up because, because if, if you wasn't living right, then why would God give you all this money? So, well, who is to say that it was really God that gave you the money just because you said it was in Jesus' name? Who is to say that that God gave you that money uh, as proof that you are with Him? Alright? Because remember, remember that's material gain. And the only person, I said it in in one of my other sermons, I'm going to keep saying it because it's true. The only somebody, being, entity, or whatever, in the New Testament, who promised all this material wealth, if you pay homage to him, is Satan when he was tempting Jesus in the desert. So this is why Jesus is saying this. But then... This can by itself can be vague. Because, okay, some preachers even say that. You know, okay, not everybody who come to me, you're going to be evildoers. So, but what defines an evildoer in, according to the Holy Bible, what's written in the Holy Bible? This is Jesus speaking. So what is evil? What is it that is evil to Jesus? I need to know this. You need to know this. We all need to know what is evil that we would not be in the new Jerusalem or, or, or he would not allow us in the heaven that he would ever say something to us uh, us that would say we can't make it in, we, we didn't make it into heaven with him well throughout the whole Bible the Old and New Testament he, he's, he's saying to us it's not that you've done something wrong but when I called you and told you that when I came to you and told you that this is unacceptable to me or an abomination to me I need you to repent stop doing this and I will forgive you you know the individual chose not to repent but to continue continue participating in that sin or abomination anyway right up until the day they died or right up until the day when Christ comes back, when it when we all know it'll be too late to ask for forgiveness then. 
So nobody's going to hell. Nobody's going to hell. Um, let's say, uh, like, 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 you have the the fire and brimstone preachers that will say, "Oh, you're going to hell because you committed such and such a vile act." You know. It's not because you did it one time or you did it or that's the lifestyle you have been living so far. You've been idol worshiping other idols, worshiping other gods, declaring that Jesus Christ is not the only way to salvation. That's another thing. That's a demonic presence also. And we saw that in Acts 6 chapter 16 verse 16. You know, that that that's what the the young the, well the demon inside the young lady is talking about and I spoke about how uh, in a lot of Bibles, like King James and uh, and even in this Catholic Bible, um, well, the Catholic Bible has it right in that in that sense. She was not running behind the apostles saying uh, they're telling you the way to salvation. She was running behind them saying uh, they're telling you a way to uh, like one of many different various ways to salvation. And I don't know. I went back there. I, Maybe I can ask them the question on it. It says that that they allowed her to follow behind them and say this for a couple of days until finally Paul gets upset with her saying this and he cast the demon out of her. Now it should have been the people's response when Paul cast that demon out of her. It should have been the people's response. He just cast the demon out of somebody in the name of Jesus Christ who is this Jesus? We need to learn how to follow him. But they were more worried about the money they lost, especially her owners. They got upset because they realized, and you can read that right there in, in, in Acts chapter 16, 16. They got upset because they realized that they couldn't make no money off of her anymore because the demon that was inside of her, allowing it, allowing her to give the, the, the power of prophecy and allowing her to, you know, I, I had somebody speak with me about, well, there's these people um, that, that they call themselves mediums. And they, they're able to connect to connect uh, people with their dead loved ones and all that, seances and all that kind of stuff. And I told her, if you look right there in Acts 16, 16, if you know that, that Jesus Christ is saying he is Alpha and Omega and you're supposed to follow him. You know those are demons doing that. Those are demonic spirits inside of those people, just like it was inside of that young lady. Trying to take people's focus off of, off of Christ as being the only Savior. Those demons are real. And then here, right here, here in, in verse 7, he says, Didn't we chase out demons in your name? Yes, you can, because if you recognize that there's a demon in somebody, and you say in the name of Jesus Christ, you know, I'm casting you out. The demon leaves. Okay? Okay, so it leaves. But why is it that he going to say to these same people, you know, you didn't, you are still an evildoer, even though you did this in my name. This is show you that the Bible does not contradict itself. This is what Jesus says here. What does Jesus say in uh, Revelation chapter 22? Okay, what does he say in Revelation chapter 22? When he's talking about who made it into heaven and who didn't make it into heaven. And I, like, I always like to, um, I always like to uh, paraphrase with my complete Jewish Bible because the way, the way that it's written here in the Catholic Bible, the way that it's written here, uh, in uh, King James Bible, I'm going to show you. It's kind of vague. It doesn't. It doesn't really specify there either. So I can understand why people, why people would uh, not really come to see what it's really talking about here. But then you got the power in the presence of the Holy Spirit, and all you have to do is ask the power, the Holy Spirit, to show you exactly what He means, what Jesus means here in verse. 15 of Revelations 20 chapter 22 and and the verse 14 he says blessed are those they who wash their robes or if I want to go up uh, a little higher 
Uh, blessed are, are they, well, no, let's go to 14. Blessed are they who wash their robes so as to have the right to the tree of life and enter the city or the new Jerusalem or the new heaven or, you know, the new earth come down through its gates. Then he says, but the people who are locked outside are not allowed to enter. And then uh, this version and and uh, King James Version says, the dogs. Now personally, I, I don't want to insult anybody. And they're not insulting anyone because back when these Bibles were written, back w when, uh, when these uh, Bibles were written, it was a slang term to call homosexuals dogs. Just like the term gay or whatever. People who uh, participated in homosexuality were called dogs. I don't want to call nobody out their name. I'm not going to call you a dog, but I, that's why I like um, the way David Stern, he went back to the original scriptures and translated it straight from Hebrew. He's a, Jew, a Jewish Christian in, in Israel. I don't know if he's still alive or not yet uh, or, or not, uh, but uh, when he made the complete Jewish Bible... You know, he wanted to point out some things, and uh, he pointed out some some Hebrew names, and he pointed out some things where he let us know what that 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 dogs is referring to homosexuality, not the people that act, and not and in everything that it is talked about here in in uh, verse fifteen, it don't just say homosexuals; it says the sorcerers here. But it, it says the people who uh, work with the occult. And and that's divination. That's palm reading. That's horoscope. That's everything on down the line. Tarot cards. Anything like that. Jesus is saying that. The people who were allowed into heaven to be with him. Were the people who did not participate in those things. If you want to be allowed in the heaven, see, see, and this is why, because there's a lot of people calling demons out in Christ's name. There's, they're doing mighty things. They are doing mighty things, but these preachers aren't, because they know they go. They know a lot of people that are giving them money to keep these big mega churches are running. They know that a lot of people who support them, call themselves Christians, have not turned away. See, it's not because you committed the act. It's because you refuse to repent from the act and you're, you're going around teaching young children that it's okay. And you're going around making laws, getting together, looking for anybody who will support you, and you're going around making laws saying it's okay to do these things. That's what's going to get anybody, myself included, because this is Jesus. Jesus is the only one who's going to let us in heaven. And if anybody want, really wants to know what would cause Jesus to tell me or, or you or anybody that you didn't make it, it's right here, Revelation chapter 2, verse 15. He's telling all of us, every human on the planet, I don't care if you were Russian, what country, what nation, what president, or whatever, what ruler you live under. Jesus Christ is telling anybody, if you support homosexuality, then you are not allowed into the New Jerusalem. You're, going, you on your, you're still on your way to hell. If you, if you never repent from supporting that because you're afraid of people, you're afraid of being, whatever, sued, persecuted, or whatever, being called a hater, you hate people because they're homosexual. I don't hate nobody because they're homosexual. But we cannot deny Jesus just said that is not allowed in the kingdom. So if anybody, individual, I don't care if you're practicing or you you are practicing homosex practicing the activity of homosexuality right now, it's that really is not a person. You know, they try to equate that with being being black. No, it's not it's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. This this is skin color that God created us with. 
and then the act of, of homosexuality, they can say, well, I have all these personal desires that, or desires in my, my flesh that wants me to do that. Well, we can't get away with that either because Jesus told us all, right there in John chapter 3, verily, verily, I say to you, you must be born again from above. So we can't use that as, no human being can use that, that as an excuse. This is the way I was when I came out my mother's womb and this is how I naturally was created and therefore leave me alone let me go ahead and, and participate in that yeah all right. if you read up further I'm going to leave you alone because Jesus said let the he said here in verse 11 let the wicked still act wickedly and the filthy still be filthy what he's saying there is that if people really don't want to repent leave them alone they don't want to come out the darkness leave them alone pray for them but leave them alone. That's why I said I'm not. Verse 11. That's why I'm not a scripture policeman. I, I'll preach the word of God to you. But I'm not going to run behind you. To check and see if you follow it. Because that, whatever you choose to do. After you've heard the true word of God. That's between you and Jesus Christ. He's the one that's going to say. Whether you make it into heaven or not. Or I make it into heaven or not. And he's given us right here. Thank God he's given. It, it's no mystery. It's not a mystery. You know, all those other religions out there, they, they send people on a quest. <laughs> Trust me, I, I studied the power of myth by Joseph Campbell when I was 17, year, 18 years old. When I first got, I, I had the book. I will tell you about myself. See, this is what? This is supposed to be second. I think this is second Friday. I don't have calendar in front of me. I think this is second Friday, right, of the month. It's supposed to be testimony month. I mean, Testimony Friday, right? So, uh, that's my background. When I was from 14 all the way up, I mean, I just kept doing that. I, I've, I've studied philosophies and everything like that. What, what happened was, uh, when I was 14, uh, in the summer of 14, I, that was the first time there was things going on in my life or in the lives of my, some family members. And, um, uh, I was down on vacation in, in, in Alabama, you know, from New York. But my, my, my uh, mother sent us down to Alabama. Um, that was the first time in my life that, that, I, that I became, what, pretty much overwhelmed. I was 14 years old, overwhelmed with certain circumstances. That's when I first started asking the Lord who he really is. But just like any other naive teenager... I started asking, and I said, I want to know who you really are. But I decided to go on my own little quest. When I got back up into New York City, city of course, I, I began to stumble across things. You know, uh, 14 years old, um, I was old enough to start going on my own. So I used to wander over into, uh, 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 I, I learned how to, after I started going to high school, I learned how to, uh, um, uh, go on the Brooklyn Bridge and walk over into Manhattan and I learned how to get to Chinatown. I was a little wanderer. And while I was there back then in Chinatown, you know, they were selling all kinds of Chinese trinkets and stuff like that. Um, I got interested in the martial arts, but the martial arts stores also sold uh, Chinese philosophy books and stuff like that. Or there was other bookstores there and, and, and stores there that, that also talked about um, Chinese philosophy and different religions like Taoism and Buddhism and stuff like that, which of course intrigued my interest. And and, and uh, people were telling me uh, I had people in school, teachers who said, thought they were mentors and they were of these other different religions, saying, you know, before you say that Jesus Christ is the only one, why don't you check and investigate other religions and stuff? And of course, being 14 years old, even though the Bible said not to. 14 years old, curiosity got the best of me, and I began delving over into, through martial arts, first of all, because I would read these magazines, they were called Inside Kung Fu, and uh, I would be looking for the articles about how to fight, but every once in a while, they would have an article about some type of philosophy or anything like that, and I remember the first one that I wrote, read was a, something, a, an article about being a Shambhala warrior. I don't remember. I think it was of Tibet or somewhere like that. But it was an article about being a Shambhala warrior. And here I was in the New York City ghetto. 
at that time in my life. And um, as I read that article, uh, I began to, to see some things. Well, you know, maybe I saw, I, uh, I, I say now, I definitely saw a lie. But at that time in my life, with all the things going on, crack, you know, crack infested New York City. Uh, at that time in my life, I, I became influenced. Uh, welcome, uh, uh, Sister McAfee. I became influenced by those things. And, and I even stumbled across, because Satan let me, I even stumbled across a book. And this, I think, is how I got hooked on to it. I stumbled across a book. What am I talking about right now? There was a guy, he said he was Christian. Now, I don't know if you ever heard it, divination, the I Ching. You know, the Chinese I Ching. You know, you throw up throw up some, uh, it's sort of like the orishas of Africa. You throw up some uh, reeds or you throw up some coins or something like that and they land. And then uh, you calculate the numbers, numerology. You calculate the numbers and uh, it tells you a fortune or something like that. Right? Well, this guy, this particular book I stumbled across... Now I know it wasn't an accident. You know, it was the devil trying to, you know, lead me astray. But um, this particular guy, he claimed he was a Christian. And um, I wasn't really getting much influence from anybody else in, in, a, in the Brooklyn ghetto. You know, all I was surrounded by people who, if, if, if I wanted role models, I was surrounded by crack heads or crack dealers. You know, and I didn't want to be neither one of those. So here I am, you know reading these things and these philosophies and they're saying things in the philosophies to keep me that, that that said you know you can keep yourself out of this stuff you know and then I was influenced by that guy's book because he said he was a Christian so you know my my naive little self you know but as I got older long story short you know I I, I went into the Navy still studying all that that kind of stuff um thinking that it was going to do something good for me. But after I left home and I got into California and I tried to apply those same philosophies, I, I got over into Taoism, Buddhism, uh, uh, Hinduism. Uh, I read all that stuff and I got over into it. But then, then I tried to apply it to my life. You know, the philosophies that I read there. I tried to apply it to, to my adult life living in another place. And and that's when my eyes like were, were opened, you know, to see that that those things were lacking. And what were they lacking? And, it, you know, it, and um, I remember being 18 years old in the Navy and then reminding myself after reading all that stuff. I read Joseph Campbell's The Power of Myth and I had knowledge about all kinds of different religions. Uh, I read about all different philosophies and everything. Uh, when my, my Navy buddies were going out drinking alcoholic, drinking alcohol, spending up all their money on alcohol, I was in the bookstore buying, buying philosophy books and all other kind of different books like that. Um, history books and cultural books and things of that nature. Encyclopedia of Native Americans. Encyclopedia of African cultures. Encyclopedias of China and, and uh, history of Europe. You know, and folklore and all that kind of stuff. So that's what I was doing with, with my finances. Long, like I just said, um, I tried to apply those things to my life. And then that's when they started come. That's when all those philosophies and lies, philosophies, started to come up short. And that was at a time in my life when I realized I needed to get back right with Jesus Christ. You know, that's when I realized that he, he is and and. and Always will be the only true savior. Not too long after that, I wound up going into uh, San Francisco Church of Christ. And like I said, we all bay whips. We all born again works in progress. I I wound up uh, becoming a member of San Francisco Church of Christ, and I, I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure if it was the San Francisco Church of Christ or if it was a, like an offshoot of it or whatever. But the thing, the thing back then was you know the the hard thing about that was that that the membership there uh were particularly being scripture police that's why one of the things I say now is I, I'm not a scripture policeman because even though um I knew that uh 
they were actually preaching Jesus Christ, there were a lot of things going on in there, just like what I'm preaching about right now, where the message is, it seems strong on, on, on the surface, but then it's really not that strong because, you know, people water down things. They water things down so that they can avoid persecution and all that kind of stuff. And then sometimes within certain, organ, certain churches and stuff like that, you encounter scripture police. And what I mean by that is, at that time, I'm pretty sure they've repented since then. But at that time, it was a lot of young people. They were they call themselves leaders and all that kind of stuff. And the old and my my brother's keeper, you know, they got so overwhelmed into into uh, looking at the speck in each other's eye and and not paying attention to the log in their own eye. And so it was a a, a place of you know. That's why people were starting to say it was cultish. It was like being in a cult because these people didn't leave you alone when you wanted to be left alone. Um, you know, there was always somebody there running to come check on you. Then, then I found out while I was there that they would report back to a higher up leader what you, what you were doing, what your activities were, what what this you know somebody had to come and. and, and take you in the corner and talk to you and we're concerned because uh, we heard that you were involved in this that and the other activity now the one thing I don't care if you you young or old one thing that I know all humans don't like is they don't we don't like somebody policing us you know if I say I want to be a, alone right now with the Lord or whatever leave me alone <laughs> you know and so it, it, it was kind of that that kind of environment and it eventually came to the point where uh, we wound up having differences about things, and uh, and they wanted me out. The, the moment they thought I did something or said something wrong, they went and blew it up. You know, magnified it, painted this this picture of I was a I was an evil guy or something like that. Which all I was doing was at, at the time I thought I was doing was was uh, testifying and talking about how I really felt and what. What changes I really felt God was making inside of me. I was just giving my testimony. But certain people did, you know, got political in there and uh, then went and announced and tried to announce, you know, when I when it just came to a, to a um, a Mexican standoff, you call it, I guess, uh, between what I felt and, and and where they wanted the church to go or the 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 ministry of Church of Christ to go, it came to a point. Where we were in disagreement, so they started looking for things, for reasons to point out why they wanted to throw throw me out the church and exile me in a sense, and, and or whatever. And at that time in my life, I really didn't mind because, you know, I had I had witnessed that there was things going on in there that was just not not godly. You know, it was just full of uh, human wisdom. And so, you know, the Lord led me. We parted ways in 1992, and from that point on, I was a little angry, a little upset. Still, you know, asking the Lord to, to help me find out my way. What's what's wrong with me? I, you know, I was angry with them, but learning at the same time to start paying attention to the log in my own eye. You know, and then I went to different churches. I, you know, in and out of different churches back back in California, in and out, in and out. Uh, you know, still learning still being a born again work in progress and still under coming to understanding you know learning how to agree and then uh learning that you know no matter what church you go to you know you're not going to always be in agreement with a hundred percent of everything but you still need to be a part of a body why because like i just I, i've said in other 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 um uh, sermons here you have that one-on-one -on -one relationship with Christ, but then you also have an interdependent relationship with the community. You've got to, and you've got to learn how to forgive one another. You know, after I got married and everything else, what what makes a marriage work? The man and the woman have to be willing. I didn't say feel like it all the time or feel like the person deserve it. But if you want your marriage to work, if you want any kind of re church relationship to work, Anything like that to really work, both sides have to be willing to forgive one another. Regardless of what they said, what they did, 
or what you felt they done to you or anything like that. You got to be willing to forgive one another. Right? Because if you don't do that, the moment you stop forgiving somebody, even if they're your family members, that's the point that's the point when blood brothers and sisters or whatever, blood siblings, I haven't talked to my sibling in 10, 15 years because of something they did or said back way back when. You know, so what you're saying is that basically you haven't been able to forgive that person. And what it's done is made you bitter and you've lost all those years of fellowship with your own your own blood sibling, your brother or sister. Because y'all couldn't forgive one another for something that happened so long ago. It was such a, a shock. To your system that you couldn't forgive. Now I know things go on. I'm not. I'm not. In the, yeah, I know some things go on between even blood brothers and sisters and and blood relatives, blood siblings that that are really harsh. That are really harsh. You know, in this world, I know some things go on. Incest, all kinds of other things like that. And I'm not saying go ahead and forgive them and, and act like it never took place. But sometimes you got to learn how to forgive people because you don't know everything that was going on forgive them so that you won't be bitter for the rest of your life right we know that we come to learn that i don't want to be bitter over something somebody did to me for the rest of my life and then and if if i know that the lord delivered me out of my maori clay and if i really love my family my brother my sister whatever like that i got to go back to them just like we read in 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 in, in psalm 51 uh, when David asked the Lord for forgiveness, he didn't go hide in the corner. He didn't go say, now that you've forgiven me, Lord, I'm not going to say anything to anybody else. I'm going to just let them go ahead and live their life how they want to live it. No, he said, because you've forgiven me when I didn't deserve it, in a sense. Verse 13 and uh, 14 of of, uh, of Psalm 51. Because you are, you, you are going to forgive me, I'm going, I must go tell the wicked of their wicked ways. I must go tell the sinners how to how to repent or, or, or get away from, from their sinful activity. Right? On the count of. And Apostle Paul, Peter, same way. Apostle Paul was killing Christians. But when Jesus stopped him, and then after he spent some time being instructed under other, some other Christians, he was told to go out and do what? Call people to Christianity. And what? Just like David, Paul, you know, the Apostle Paul. When he encountered people who knew he used to be going out killing Christians, of course that was the first thing they said to him. How are you a Christian now when you used to be out killing Christians? And and uh, it even says in one of the book of Acts, when he said he used to kill Christians, and now that he is one, the people said, well, on the count of you used to kill Christians, that's why you need to go to jail. And he wound up going to jail for it. <laughs> you know, when he was giving his testimony. Now we know you, they said, now we know you crazy because you went, you was killing these people and now you're one of them. You know, okay. But Paul didn't care about that, you know. He still went out and he, he um, you know, went out and did what the Lord told him to do. Even though he knew that he had that former reputation out there. You know, so the same thing when I came to my road, Damascus understanding of, of being anointed, uh, not being able to do do uh, everything on, in, in, in the Bible under your own strength, being a, the importance of being anointed by the Holy Spirit, you know, not denying that it's not just studying the word. Anybody, the devil even knows how to study the Bible from Genesis to Revelations, you know. It's not just that. It's not just that we study. But at some point, we have to recognize that Christ is alive. Not that I believe He's alive. That He is alive. You know? And that that He wants to come in and wash out all your sinful desires. If you let Him. But if you don't let Him by, by not, your unwillingness to repent. If you don't let Him do it, He ain't going to force Himself on you. It's an opportunity to come. You want to be with Christ, you know. And then right here, 
Thank you, Lord. You, it's, it's very clear right here. He gives us instruction on what to go preach to people. If they want to go into heaven, if you want to go into heaven, it's, it's very clear instruction right there. He's telling us, if you don't want to find yourself locked outside the city, then he's saying right here, outside the city are the homosexuals, the sorcerers, the unchaste is, is people. That's It says in uh, King James Whoremongers, that's people who are, whether you like me saying it or not, but if you want to go and if, if you want Jesus to take you into the kingdom with him, you got to accept it and you got to be willing to repent. You know, having sex without being lawfully wed, having, without having walked down that aisle in front of a, a, a Christian minister. Having sex, I don't care if you in the moment is engaged to be married, but if you're doing all that, remember Joseph and Mary, Joseph was waiting until the actual marriage night came to do anything with Mary. He was engaged to her, right? <laughs> he was engaged to her, but he didn't touch her. That was the whole thing. How she wound up pregnant, I know I ain't touch her. He was about to get, well, you know, something ain't right here. She's been sleeping around. She's not the kind of chass woman I thought she was. Right? And then the angel comes and said, no, Joseph, you know, she was telling you the truth. It had to be an angel to come tell Joseph. <laughs> Can you blame Joseph? I don't, I don't know any man, if it wasn't for, for divine intervention, would believe a pregnant woman that you was engaged to telling you, it was the spirit of the Lord that impregnated me, and He told me that I was carrying carrying God's baby. You know. All right, you know. So I, let's not overlook that it was divine intervention. Joseph was was woken up in a dream. Well, Gabriel said she wasn't lying to you. <laughs> and believe me, He's the only one Savior. So, young men out there, if if you with a woman right now and she telling you something like that. You know, and you know you ain't been with her, and she's telling you something like that. It ain't true. There's only one Jesus Christ. You know, he came and died and rose again. All right? But right here it says Jesus is talking, and he says, Unchast are not welcome in heaven. Not because you've committed the act. And I got I to gotta stress this because people get bent out of shape. I was talking to somebody last night at work. And boy, she got bent out of shape. What do you mean? You, and, and, you, you know, and this, this, that, and the other. I'm like, look, I didn't say because you committed the act. I said, Jesus said because we didn't repent of the act. All throughout the Bible, I mean, and uh, we read uh, Revelation chapter 1 to 3. We read through Revelation chapter 1 to 3 in the churches, and we called them conditions. What was the m number one thing Jesus said to them? After he told them what, what, they, what they was doing wrong, what they were doing wrong, the first thing he said is, you must repent. And I'm giving you some time and a chance to repent from whatever it is that you're doing. But if you choose not to repent and think I'm going to take you into heaven, he's telling you right, telling us right there, he's telling all of us right there, right there in his verse. No, you're not going to enter in. And, and if any pastor out there told you, or pope, or pastor or anybody told you that you that you was forgiven and you was going to enter in, they lied to you. And it's right there. Right here. It for everybody who can read to see. Participating in that. And then it says the murderers. Murderers covers a lot of stuff. I can only give you a few examples. Just like Sister McAfee, you know, Pastor Felix always gave us an example. You might not murder somebody, somebody physically, but you can murder someone's spirit. Right? But then, when you think about abortion, and how people try to tell you that's not murder. That is murder in God's eyes. See, but murder covers a lot of stuff. It can be spiritually, physically. Uh, 
medically. And I'm talking about like abortion and stuff like that. Murder. People say mur uh, abortion. Oh, it's not wrong. Okay, maybe I don't know. I'm not a I'm not a female. I don't know all the all the ins and outs of and people come up with all kinds of excuses. But there are some women who want to be unchast, who want to stay whoremongers. There are a lot of women who have decided that a child, carrying a child, and, and, and all of that is going to interfere with their uh, ability or their desire to go out there and be a, a whoremonger. Right? So they don't want this baby. So what they go do? Go get an abortion. Or they take that day after pill or whatever. But, but they're going to keep doing what they're doing. They're going to keep doing it. They're not going to repent about it, about being unchaste, about having sex with people you're not married to. And the men the same way. I don't leave men out. There's a lot of men who force their women, or whether it be psychologically or whatever, a lot of young men get a woman pregnant, and you know she, she'll, she'll believe anything you say. And you go and try to woo her and tell her, look, you know, I'm not ready to be a father. I ain't going to take care of the baby. You need to go down there and get an abortion. See? So even though she the one went down there and got the abortion because you told her that, you a murderer yourself. So I'm not talking about just, just the females and all that kind of stuff. But you know who you are. And Jesus is saying right here. That if you continue to live that way and you continue to teach children, it's okay to go and have these abortions just because you don't want the baby and all this other kind of stuff. Just throw the baby away, throw the baby out with the bathwater and, and all that kind of stuff. It's okay to do it. Even if we teach children it's okay. Uh heterosexual children, it's okay to have sex. We give them all those condoms and everything. We know you're not, you know, that that Honestly, that's a cop out. We know you're not gonna gonna refrain, and you're gonna go try to sneak and do it anyway. So I'm gonna give you something to protect yourself. Yeah, you might have protect, helped protect them from from getting a sexual transmitted disease, but you ain't protecting them from from getting locked out of heaven. Because every individual, young or old, who disobeys this this stuff and and deliberately keeps doing it until the day they die or until the day Christ comes back, which we don't know when that is. It's going to find itself locked out of heaven. Right? Then he goes into idol worshipers. And whether anybody like it or not, anybody on this planet like it or not, what that means is if you belong to any other religion out there besides Jesus Christ Yeshua HaMashiach is the savior of all mankind if you I don't care if you were born in it you grew up in it whatever I'm just letting you know according to the Bible right here it says that you worship in an idol it's not a real God and when Christ comes back if you never repent and turn away from, once you learn that what you're doing if you if you would rather follow mommy and daddy instead of the word of God right here, when Christ comes back, you're not going to get be allowed into the kingdom of heavenly gates. That goes for all human beings, myself included. So any other religion on the face of this earth, and then we can go back to Acts sixteen sixteen to show you, that's what the demon. What, and that young lady was, was trying to say that all religions are the same and that that uh, Jesus Christ is just one way to the same place. That's why the Apostle Paul finally got fed up with her and chased that demon and, and cast the demon out of her. Because they recognized that people were being influenced by that and people were, were looking at Christianity, were, were looking at the message of Jesus Christ as just one of many different ways to different philosophies and all that kind of stuff so he that's when he finally said you know away with you in the name of Jesus Christ get away from from you and all that stuff 
And then the people's reaction, they were more worried about money. Now, I know in this day and age, one of the reasons why it's so hard for me to come from a platform of many churches and preach this way, probably why the Lord told me to do it this way, and preach this way is because too many of the people in there are too worried about losing, losing membership, losing congregation. If we go out there and tell people they need to repent from, they're giving us all this money, but if we go out there and tell them they need to repent from homosexuality and, and watching them horoscope, reading their horoscopes, checking their horoscopes when they, they meet somebody. What? Somebody, the other night, I didn't say anything to them because, I, you know, like I said, I'm not a scripture policeman, but there were some people the other night. A young lady, she, she met some guy, and she wanted to... She was looking on the computer for the on the horoscope, and a lot of people do this. We did this when we was kids too. Uh, you know, I want to see if we compatible. What's your sign? What's his sign? You know, Leo, Capricorn. Is, do they compete? Do they are they compatible, or do they compete with one another? And all that kind of stuff. All that kind of stuff. You say it's fun. It's for fun. But Jesus right here said that sorcery. Or, you know, that's that's working with the occult and all that kind of stuff. Jesus right here said, if you keep going to the devil to ask the devil for advice, then you don't belong to me and you're not going to go into the pearly gates. Of course it's the devil. If if you're not getting that information from the Holy Spirit, who you think is supplying that information? Right? Who's, who's supplying the information? Who knows just what to say to you? All the right things to say to you to get you all tripped up. And I, and I and, and from my past, I know some other young ladies uh, who did that. They went to see if this guy was compatible for them because the last guy was such a a hole. They even say he was such an a hole. I need to make sure that the next person I'm with is truly compatible with me. So they went off. And I know who they are. They went off. I'm not going to give their name or nothing. And read inside the horoscope book that this person was the, the, the best match for them. And, you know, and, and, and once they get together, oh, the world is going to change. They're going to live happily ever after and all this other kind of stuff. Now, this young lady, matter of fact, she had just had a baby. She fornicated. And, of course, they fornicated. She had a baby by a guy. Who disappeared on her. And we'll say maybe a year later. A year later she meets another guy. And she was so happy about it. Oh, you know this and that. And, and back then I told her. This was when I was going to uh, medical assistant school. That's where I met her. And, I, and, I, and I, I mentioned to her. I said, you know what? I'm a Christian. And the only thing I can do is tell you. Don't. Don't be trying to go get with somebody else after you've already gotten through this and this guy's broken your heart. Don't be trying to get to somebody else off of what these horoscopes are saying. And a few more horoscope believers chimed in. Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. This, this, that, and the other. Oh, you know, it does tell the truth. This, this, that, and the other. Okay, it tells the truth. I'm not a scripture policeman, but I, I warned you. Just remember, I warned you. Okay, what happened? A few months later. She going off with this guy a few months later, right? Already heartbroken from the last guy. A few months later, fornicating with this other guy. She gets pregnant. He disappears on her. And I found out about it, too. You know, I mean, you know, she came to me solemnly. The young lady came to me solemnly and alone. She said, I should have listened to you. With tears in her eyes, I should have listened to you. You know, I don't know what I'm going to do now because I've already had one baby and by somebody who did me this way. And what's wrong with me? You know, feeling very uh, low about herself because she let it happen twice. Um, you know, and and I told her, I said, you know, you, you at least now you you're at a point where, you know, consider. Consider what I told you. Consider that Jesus Christ really is the only true person who really loves you and, and, and will want you to have a good life. 
and think about you know getting into a good church and studying the, studying the word and stuff like that. She said, and then she said to me, "Well, my mother always goes to church, and, and I just didn't want to go to church." And, and I know so many people in California and and in you know throughout you be, you meet so many people who who uh, you know it takes something like that for them to wake up and realize that it, it must be true that Jesus is the only. I just told y'all my my own. You know, I had experiences, and I tried to apply all that stuff to my life. You know, so I'm not. So you know, sometimes people think I'm speaking out of a out of a out of the air when I tell people, you know, you don't want to go that way. They look at me and they they just assume that I don't know what I'm talking about. And I try to tell them, you know, when I was young, I'm 47 years old now. When I was in my teens even I, I studied that stuff diligently and I really believed it was going to take me somewhere and it took me to nowhere that's why I can tell you now I've been there I've done that that's a jaded Mandarin for me right you know so that's why I tell people that that's been my experience that's been my born again work in progress experience I know all that stuff already I would never leave somebody you know people are like well you, you ain't never going to say that other religions have just the same amount of equality. And I'm going to tell them no. Because I've been there. I've done that. I don't care what it is. There is no equal. Jesus Christ is Alpha and Omega. And if anybody wants to be with him, we all must be willing, willing, willing to repent from the things he says right here. And then the last part, it says, all who love and practice deceit. That's anybody trying to practice deceit. You love to lie to folks. You love to lead people astray just to get money from them or whatever. And if you don't repent from doing that, whoever you profess yourself to be, con artists. I learned that con artists does not mean convict. Con artist means convincive artist. They have the they have the ability, I don't say where they got it from, or the skill to convince people that they're telling the truth when in fact they're telling you a lie. That's what a con artist is. It doesn't mean convict artist, it means convincive artist. A deceiver. Someone who can lie to you and make you think, you know, I thought they was telling me the truth. You have even Christian based con artists. That's what Jim Jones was. He was able to con all those people, get them strung out. They all had, majority of them, majority of those people that went with Jim Jones, it wasn't just. It wasn't just that he was such a good con artist, but he was also their supplier. A lot of those people that Jim Jones influenced were former were, were drug addicts. And he came to them with this with this Jesus Christ con. And um, he would basically supply them with with a sustainable amount of drugs. Long as they, they came devoted to his his church. Why do you think it was so e it wasn't just because it wasn't just because uh he told all those people down there uh that that the, the they coming to get us and we're going to have to poison ourselves and drink this poison. Why did they drink it? Because they were already used to getting drugs from him. He was their pusher, their supplier. Or the people in the administration, they were supplying those people with drugs. So when they all went down there in, in, into um and took their children too, Unfortunately, down there into Guyana and all that kind of stuff. That's why it was so easy. A lot of times, you know, I learned stuff about history. Why is how is it so easy for people to get? Yeah, demonic spirits. Yes, of course, demonic spirits were behind it. But why is that so easy for for mass amount of people to do something like that? Because the devil wants to taint the name of Jesus Christ. The devil wants all these other people being afraid to come to churches and things because out of the fear it might be a cult and a cult or something like that. And the fear is warranted because there's a whole lot of folks. So, you know, there's a whole lot of folks out there will never 
And this is how you can tell. They will never, they will never come from, from Revelations chapter 22 and tell you this is the message of Christ. Verse 13, I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. There is no other religion on earth. There is no other religion on earth or anybody on earth that is truly your savior, has anything good for you. Those are all demons. Whether you like somebody out there like me saying it or not, that's what, what this Bible tells you. And this is the word of God. Okay? That's why it says that there. And then he's saying, blessed are the people. That's what's supposed to be our Christian message. If you are in the church where this message is not being taught, everybody, if you want to, if you want to know what is going to keep you out of heaven, is because right there, you are a participant homosexual, and you didn't want to stop. You never repented, and now it's judgment day. You were a person, you were a sorcerer. You you like you like to not only read people's palms, but teach people that all that divination and all that kind of stuff, like the witch of Endor or somebody, was okay. You never repented from it, and you taught little children that it was okay. You're gonna find yourself locked outside of the if you never repent, find yourself locked outside of the kingdom of heaven. Now the next one, the unchast. And all of us. Majority of us on this planet have been unchast and done stuff out of wedlock. But if it's only those of us who repent from it and stop teaching the kids that it's all right, that's a hard thing to do, especially we even mess ourselves up. I did it, so ain't nothing wrong if they do it too. No, I did it and I was wrong. <laughs> no, that's what we supposed to be saying. I did it and I was wrong. And I pray for you, young man or woman, men or women out there, to stop doing it to each other. Because every time you, you, you agree to do it, you're locking yourself out of the kingdom of heaven. Every time you sit down and agree to do it, and we don't know when Christ will come back, he might come back in the middle of you doing your mess. I'll put it to you that way. What if he show up like a thief in the night? He said he's going to show up like a thief in the night. What if he show up right in the middle of you doing something with somebody? Okay? But he tells us right here, such people who keep doing it, not going to enter in the kingdom of heaven. I say to you, in the name of Jesus Christ, stop shacking up with each other. Stop telling each other, you know, the, the, the number one thing young couples do too, also, and it, and it don't, don't always turn out this way. The guy and the girl that said, well, we're going to get married anyway, so why should we wait until afterward? Because God told you to. <laughs> That's the one thing. Think about Aaron's two sons in Leviticus chapter, chapter uh, 10. And understand, because God said not to do anything. And if you have already done something, well, you need to repent. Get married. In the church. With some witnesses. Go through the ceremony. Why I got to bother with that? Because God said that's the way he wants you to do it. Don't be like Aaron two sons. Trying to show God there's a better way to doing things. And get yourself burnt. Okay. That's all I'm trying to say. You know. You're going to wind up in hell. In the hell fires. Because you tried to show. Prove to God. That his way was not not the best way. And just like Aaron two son. You're going to reap from doing that. So I'm telling you now. If you really want to be with Jesus. And you've already done it. Repent about it. And stop teaching the young children that it's okay. Tell the young children. Be honest. I messed up. I did it. I did wrong. I chose to do wrong. But I don't want that, that burden to be on you young child. I told all my children, I don't want the burden to be on you like, like it is on me and, and your mother. We weren't supposed to do it. We chose to do it. We weren't supposed to do it. But that don't mean, that don't give you an excuse saying, 
because mommy and daddy did it, I'm going to do it too. Because everybody's supposed to be following the word of God. And you have your own relationship with God. So you can't go to Jesus and say, because my mommy and daddy did something wrong, that's why I did it too. And you, go, you, ought, to, you ought to let me into heaven because my, my family or my parents was doing it too. And that's not going to fly because each and every individual... Who wants to go to heaven must consider this in, in, in verse 15 and say, well, I know what I need to. This is specific. I know what I need to repent from. So these lying who pe people who practice deceit in the churches and stuff. Being a deceiver doesn't always mean you're telling a lie about Jesus. It also means because of fear of persecution, because of fear of of losing membership, you know, or or losing the money that's coming in to keep your doors open or your lights on and all that kind of stuff, you neglect to tell people. You know there's some people in your church fornicating, whoremongering. You know there's a couple of people in the church participating in homosexuality. But you don't care, though, because, you know, the pastors don't care because... They really don't care about that because all they want to do is make sure they have enough money to pay their bills and keep the church doors open. So you never say anything about it. Does that ring a bell? Do, am I the only one that know there's churches like that out there? Now, if you really love somebody, the reason why I said my last one, if you love me, don't tell me lies about Jesus. If you love somebody, this is how you know you love someone. You tell them the truth about what Christ expected of them. You don't hide nothing. You don't avoid certain topics. You tell them the truth. And I would tell anybody, I don't care if you right now, you you are a grave supporter of LGBT, all that kind of stuff. If you call yourself a Christian or you want to be saved, you're going to have to repent and come up out of that. You're going to have to turn away from it. Ask God to forgive you. And like David when he did his sins, what did he say right there in Psalm 51? Let's read that for a minute, you know. Psalm 51, verse 15. Psalm 51, verse 15. Woo. Let me see how long I've been, for an hour? Okay. Psalm 51, verse 15. He says... I will teach the wicked your ways, God's ways, that the sinner may return to you. So that means, if you're coming out of that demonic spirit of homosexuality, and you want to be saved, and you know you want to go to heaven, and you know that, that you want to be in heaven with Jesus Christ, and you know that you had to turn away from your homosexual ways then you must go back if you really love all the people that you say in LGBT you got to go back and tell them too they're, they're moving in the wrong direction who are you supporting you know you're trying to say it's love here and then you took the then then the, the organization takes the rainbow that God said in the Bible is a symbol that he will not destroy the earth by the, totally destroy the earth by water again but by fire and, 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 and all other symbols like that God took a rainbow and made a symbol LGBT takes the rainbow to, to say that it's okay to be gay you know and that and somehow that whenever you see a rainbow now you associate, people associate it and little, little children associate God's rainbow with that Instead of what God had it originally intended it for. Right? You know, okay, so. But if you if you have been doing that in the past, and you want to be with Jesus when he comes back, or when you want to be in the new kingdom, or the new, the new city, the new Jerusalem, you now know that that's what you need, that's one of the things that you're probably going to need to repent about, and stop teaching the little children that it's okay. Same thing for everybody that, that has anything. I don't care if you're making money off of horoscopes or anything like that because the second one is sorcery. 
if you make money or you're well known for helping people, reading people's palms and all that kind of stuff, but you want to make it into the kingdom of heaven, you need to repent. You know who you are. If you're listening to me, you know who you are. If you have been participating in that, repent before Christ comes back. Repent. Turn away from it. Stop teaching people it's okay. Stop saying, oh, it's just all fun and games. It's not serious. It's serious enough for Jesus to say, you ain't getting into heaven? That's serious. Because there ain't no other place to go but to hell. That's some serious stuff. And, and, and I pray that some people out there, especially young people, you come to understand just how serious that is. Yeah, people making money off it. Shoot. I, I, we all, always used to read out the Sunday paper back, back before we had internet and everything. And then you get these emails and even on Facebook. You get these posts. Read your horoscope today. People are making money off of that stuff. They're making money off it. Remember Madam Cleo? Called me now. And then she... Actually, one time in California, Madam Cleo called me. And I was like... She called me and she says, Hold on for a minute. <laughs> it was a recording. She said, Hold on for a minute. While, uh, you know, this call is a what? They would charge you a dollar for a dollar a minute or some 10 cents a minute or something like that. Please hold if you want to hear, hear, a, um, hear a, a, a psychic reading from Madam Cleo, right? And then the funny thing about that was she'd keep you on the phone for 5, 10 minutes <laughs> on hold while you're being charged 10 cents a minute. <laughs> or whatever, a dollar a minute, or however much it was. She'd keep people on hold for 5, 10, 15 minutes. And, and the amazing thing, people on hold, you know, and she's racking up all this money. People were on hold waiting to hear a psychic reading from the devil. You know, stuff like that. And, and then have the audacity to, to have that automated thing call you up instead of you calling her. She said, call me now, and she called you now. <laughs> it was a racket, you know. So all of that is a racket. Remember Dion Warwick, Psychic Network, and all them people? They still around, you know. I see the commercials sometimes when I work in the hospital at night. I see the little commercials. Have your palm read. Call this person. They can tell you this, that, that, and the other. It's on YouTube everywhere. Them people are making... Them demonic spirits, just like the the young lady in Acts sixteen sixteen, they're making a whole lot of money off of telling you them, them demonic lies. Of course, they it, once they find out about these these podcasts, they're gonna be mad. I'm gonna get a whole bunch of persecution from them, but I don't really care. Okay, so if you out there, anybody out there listening or, or viewing. You want to make sure that when it's your day to leave your leave this earth, or if Christ comes back before you leave your your flesh, you want to make sure that you're doing right, and you've been participating in that. Repent, you know, and go and tell people after you repented. And after you accepted that Jesus Christ is the only Savior, do like David did. I will teach the wicked God's ways that the sinner may return to you. That's what you suppose, every Christian is supposed to do that, knowing that we've been forgiven, though we don't deserve forgiveness. Now I got to go out and tell somebody. Whether they like me saying it or not, I got to go out and tell you. Because that's what God called me to do. That is the, the best. If you love somebody, I don't care who, who it is. If you really love people, you're not going to hide this message from them. If you really love somebody and you don't want them to see them go to hell, you got to tell them this message. And, and you call yourself a Christian, born again Christian, whatever. This message has to be 
in your church. Your pastors, leaders, everybody. Out of everything else you say. Out of everything else they do on TV where they talk about put faith in God and you're going to have millions and millions of dollars. And they, and, 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 and they never tell you. You need to make sure you turn away from these sins listed down here because Jesus is saying with his own mouth, if you don't turn away from these things, it don't say nothing in here. We read in here, it don't say nothing in here, revelations about uh, you not going to make it into the kingdom of heaven because you was never able to have a six-figure income or, or, or you you didn't pay your bills on time or you, you were lacking in, in that area or something like that. It don't say that. You know, it don't say you had to have that white, you know, and I'm not chucking anybody. If God gave you this as a blessing, don't, don't, don't get this twisted. But it just doesn't say here, like I hear the evangelists saying, they make people feel like, I, I, you know, I try to listen and see what, what they make people feel like. They make people feel like if I don't have a house, if I don't have a fancy car, if I don't have anything like this, I must be doing something wrong because God is not blessing me. And that's why I always remind you, show me the apostle. I'm not talking about Abraham and everything. Show me the apostle in the Bible, in the New Testament, who was blessed with a nice house, a nice well, horse buggy and carriage or whatever like that. Whatever, whatever. <laughs> who, who was it that had the nice house of all the apostles? Were they living in a lap of luxury? Or were they fleeing from town to town, being beaten up, persecuted, and put in jail? Why? Because they was telling people to turn away from homosexuality? They was telling people that Jesus Christ is the only true God and there's no other God. Stop worshiping, worshiping these idols. They was telling people, stop fornicating, whoremongering. They was telling people, if you really want to be saved, stop murdering people. Stop being a murderer. Stop being an idol worshiper. Stop teaching these children lies. And for that, they were put in jail. For that, they were tortured. And their children were tortured. The first century church. The first century church wasn't living in the lap of luxury. And these were the first century church and the apostles. They was God's highly, our heavenly father's highly favored. Now I'm not knocking if if like you know T.D. Jakes and them they all have that stuff they acquire it to God fine but I, what, what I am saying is that the message of Revelation chapter uh, 22 verse 15 needs to be going out as well whether it be on TV off TV whatever and anybody afraid to tell this message because you're gonna you're afraid you're gonna Get persecution from LGBT. They're going to say you you hate us. You hate homosexuals. And you do all this stuff. Because homosexuality is just like racial discrimination. Which is a lie. <laughs> That's a big lie. But anyway. Murderers. Racial. Now. 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 Murderers. Another murderer. Are racist. Anybody, I don't care whether you're white, black, or whatever. You hate somebody. You want to take somebody's life. Just because they the opposite color skin as you. You live in that lifestyle. I don't care if you're listening to me right now. And you are part of the neo-Nazi, whatever, whatever. Or the, the black revolutionary, whatever, whatever. Or whoever else. Militant. Islamics, whatever you're going to call yourself, you can do all that. But when you when you standing up in front of front of Jesus Christ on the throne, thinking you're going to get into heaven, it don't say here anything about you're going to commit a jihad. You're going to go blow yourself up, and then you, then you're going to have. It don't say nothing about that here. I know what it says. It don't say that in your book either, <laughs> your Quran book either. But just like there's some deceivers. In Christianity, there's some deceivers in Islam too, and making y'all believe that all that junk. But anyway, uh, it don't say all of that, but it does say that if we don't repent from the things listed right here, that we won't make it in. 
And so that this needs to be a part of every Christian's message. I ain't say it was wrong to tell somebody how to put faith in Jesus to get yourself out of poverty or, or to do better with your finances. That's part of this world. What that going to do for... I didn't say anything's wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with you having a nice house. There's nothing wrong with you having a nice car. Okay? There's nothing wrong with that. And you attribute it to God? Yeah, hallelujah. Yeah, God blessed you with that. There's nothing wrong with that. But you better make sure your message, your Christian message, also includes this right here. Not only for yourself and your immediate family, but for anybody ever asks you, what must I do to become born again? What must I do to become saved? Don't just say blanketly. They say, well, God, forgive me of my sins without defining what the sin is. There's a whole bunch of kids growing up thinking, well, I asked Lee Jesus to forgive me of my sins. And then you ask them, what is sin according to the Bible? And they don't even know. So how do they know? Back to Leviticus chapter 5, 17. How do they know that they're actually turning away from the things that, that, that our Heavenly Father required them to turn away from in the name of Jesus Christ? How do you know? If nobody defines for you. And in, in, in this world, television shows, everything is telling these kids, they come in home, they look at these cartoons, everything. Telling these kids it's okay to be gay. It's okay to involve yourself in the occult. This, this, that, on, down. Just about everything in these video games too. Just about everything that Jesus says right here is going to lock you out the kingdom of heaven. There is a game or a cartoon or a television show saying the exact opposite. So it's just not the homosexuality. The exact opposite. You're going to find something on TV out in this world. Some of them school teachers. They say, well, you can't teach about God in school. But they'll throw up. Oh, sure they will. They will. They'll, if, if they have another religion. Oh, sure. They'll put that stuff in there. Symbol, symbolism and all that kind of stuff They'll put that in there But then they'll turn around and tell you Oh no no you can't teach about Jesus Christ here Why? And then even, even to join in with that I know this is Satan's world But why? Why can't we tell people To turn away from homosexuality? Why can't we tell people Turn away from being a sorcerer And, and all that stuff The occult and all that stuff Why can't we tell people you know how clean the ghetto would get if we told young children what an honor it is not to have sex until you're actually married and, and obey the Lord? You know, it don't have nothing to do with the color of your skin. You know how many people, you know who would lose business? Welfare. They would lose a whole lot of business if minority children stopped having sex and babies out of wedlock, wouldn't they? They would lose a whole lot of business. Why do you think they encourage it? Planned parenthood. Why do you think they encourage it to us? The poor people. The minorities and stuff like that. They encourage us. Oh, don't worry about it. If you get pregnant, young child, here's, first of all, here's some, some contraceptives that they know you ain't, them, them kids ain't going to use because they're going to get curious. And babies having babies. Oh, they know, okay, you know, don't worry about it. Because they're making money off of, off of us. You know? And it had really have nothing to do with color of skin. I'm saying the people who are under a certain poverty level. Anybody living in poverty. White, black, whatever. When every... The slave trade. Okay? Back when slavery was here in the United States of America. Do you know that, that um, there are scriptures that, that, that say... Uh, encourage men and women to be chaste until until till marriage, right? That was unproductive for the slave trade. See, that was unproductive for the slave trade because the slavers knew marriage, keeping the family together, and all that kind of stuff, teaching people not to have sex unless they were lawfully wedded, married, and all that kind of stuff. If they really wanted, were, were true about that, and they, if they really loved 
their slaves and all that kind of stuff, and they were real Christians, they knew that they couldn't make any money, just like Acts 16, 16, they couldn't make any money off of, off of not reproducing a whole bunch of slaves. So they sold those kids off, you know, they had, they had a breeding facilities, I think it was the one down there in Georgia and one down there in Mississippi and some other places. Breeding facilities where slave men and women were taken. And they didn't even care if if the man was the woman's son or anything like that. They didn't care about that. All they cared about was if he was fertile. They, they forced them to breed and stuff. They take them babies and then go sell, sell them in the slave trade. Just like cattle or anything else. You know? So all kinds of, you know, wickedness and stuff in, in this world. People doing things. And we've grown up with that. There's so many things that we attribute to Christianity, but there's not really there. And when we read the Bible, it's not really there. And Satan got a, a, whole, a whole bunch of us black folk or non-white folk here in the United States. I'm not going to serve Jesus who is the only savior because it's a white man's God it was not a white man's God <laughs> there is nothing in here that says anything about race it don't say it's, it, everything is an, an, an act a physical act it don't say anything about a person's race that, that Jesus is not going to let you into heaven because you black or white or anything like that yeah, they taught that lie, but then right there, all who love and practice deceit. So all that stuff, right now, there's a bunch of, uh, and I'll tell you, there's a bunch of white Christians, Caucasian Christians, who don't want anybody of any other color in their church because their pastors and their, and their parents and everything else have been teaching them that deceitful lie that uh, the color of their skin is a determining factor whether you go to heaven or not. So we see right here in verse 15, it don't say nothing about the color of anybody's skin, whether you go to heaven or not. And I saw on the news, I saw on the news, and maybe it was about four or five months ago where they, they had it on the news that this, this, uh, young uh, white pastor went to a church he was new in the church and he invited some he invited some uh, black people to come to the church to come visit the church it was predominantly white he didn't even know because he came from a he came from a, a interracial part of part of the United States but he came to a part where he didn't realize that, that the people were being racist and um, when the black people showed up, they didn't say anything, but after they left, they came to him and told him, um, you know, we, we, we know that you're a new pastor and you don't understand, but we don't want black people coming in this church anymore. You know, and then when they told him why, and it made the news. I mean, I don't know why it made the news, but it made the news. That's how I found out about it. It made the news. Uh, you know, black people, we don't, we don't believe black people are... Uh, uh, um, of Christians anyway and all that kind of stuff so that still goes on but I'm telling you right now that falls under all who practice love and practice deceit if you're telling them little white children to, even to this day that, that they're superior to anybody else because of the white skin that they have on their body you know I mean, you, can you still get away with that after these two hurricanes that just came and hit <laughs> hit Texas <laughs> and hit Florida can you really get away with saying that I mean I, the Hurricane Katrina should have been you know all natural disasters do you think when a natural disaster comes and then those people who tell you that God don't bring natural disasters well we already talked about that right Amos chapter 4 you know Malachi chapter 1 so many other parts and, and places you know we can read about that do you really think that uh, that uh, 
you know, you can get away with that, teaching children that, still in this day and age, teaching children that the color of their skin, God makes a judgment based on whether you're white, black, or anything like that. No. You know? And no, see, see, that's not here. You see, if, if, if homosexuality and racial discrimination was the same thing <laughs> in God's eyes, then, you know, then it would say here, somewhere here. It says homosexuals are locked out, but it don't say black folks are locked out of heaven for being black. So it can't be the same thing in God's eyes. You know, when people try to convince you it's the same stuff. Now, of course, after all of this, while we don't know if Jesus is going to come back in the, in the next hundred years or the next hundred seconds. We don't know that. But we do know this. Time is running out short. We do know this. It's coming to that time where we're going to be under the one world order. And building up a wall between here and Mexico and doing all that other kind of stuff. Okay, build up a wall. That wall, didn't we learn from Japan? <laughs> Those walls ain't going to, if God wants a tsunami or whatever to come, if God wants a wave to come up over your wall, it's going to come anyway. So I'm not stupid. I know the wall down there that they want to build certain people president and everybody want to build in Mexico is to stop the wave of people coming in. But the it's, a wave is a wave. When them Japanese people up there built that 500 foot wall and said we're going to stop the tsunami from coming in. And the tsunami was like what? 600 feet? <laughs> no. 501 foot. <laughs> Went right up over the wall, brought the boats over the wall and everything, right? Because they thought, they, I mean, you see, race don't have nothing to do with people who think they can defy God. Right? But they learned their lesson, though, right? A lot of them. There was people, see, when those tsunamis come like that, and like I said before, I'm serious. There, there was a place, that last tsunami that hit in like 2005, and it, and it went all the way to India and it, it covered up uh, all those regions down there and and, and, and it went into India and all, all those other regions. Remember that tsunami? There was an and I learned this from what I was watching I know it was Discovery Channel or History Channel and I learned this from the, from the guy who felt that he was obligated I guess it was the demonic spirit inside of him. He felt he was obligated to go put back the culture of demon worship on this island in the south, southern, south of India, where for thousands of years, and it may be, it, it must be true because you know what? It, it take a, a powerful force of the Holy Spirit to get to these people. I'm going to show you something. Acts 16, the beginning of Acts 16, right? Let me show you what Luke wrote in the beginning of Acts 16. Where somewhere in here it was after the time Paul came, see how the cities were. Where I'm trying to get to, it says where the um, there was a place that says the Holy Spirit barred them. From, from going into to, to Asia Minor. Let me see. They traveled through the Pagirian Galatian territory. Had been messaging. Uh, right here. Acts 16 verse 6. Through Asia Minor. That's India. It says. They traveled through the Pagirian. Uh, Pagirian. And Galatian territory. Because they had. Uh, been prevented. By the Holy Spirit. From preaching the message in the province of Asia. Now why, if Jesus sent out everybody, why would the Holy Spirit prevent someone from going into India? Right? 
And then, of course, they're going to obey the Holy Spirit. They're not going to push into India. The Holy Spirit said, I ain't, don't go that way. Because God reserved things for a, t- a certain time and place. So even back then, when Paul and them was preaching Christianity, there were certain parts of India they could not go because what we know now, the Holy Spirit is saying now, these people are so steeped over into idol worship and, and worshiping false gods and deities and things like that, that, you know, you're not going to, it's going to take a miracle. It's going to take an act of God to get these people out of that, out of that. And so you you go over here where God tells you to go, and you leave that up to the to the power and the presence of, 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 of God Almighty to change these people. Way back then, thousands of years ago, it take an act of God to change them. So, like I said, I watched this on television. This man, he felt... That after that tsunami hit, it rolled over. Now, 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 get the miracle of this. A large wave, maybe 100 foot, 200 foot, rolled. There was this island. I can't remember what the name of it was. But for thousands or whatever, hundreds of years, these people worshipped demons. They actually had a name. They had thousands of different names for demons. And they were teaching their children. And they stayed on this island. They never left this island. But but it was an island full of demon worship. When that, in 2005, I think it was, when that tsunami came. I think it was 2005. When that tsunami came, <clears throat> there was thousands of people on the island. But get this, though. That tsunami came, and it, it covered the whole island. Under at least 100 feet of water. At least. A hundred feet of water. Everyone should have drowned. Where we? Where was they going to find coverage? Everyone should have drowned. And believe it or not, <laughs> the people that that they say, the little children that they say survived, when their parents, even though they worship demons, they was doing this for hundreds of years, and they didn't want to be have Christianity. Their parents, they had these boats. And they put their children under the boats to try to save them. You know, put the boat upside down and cover the children up in them. Like a little air pocket or something like that, right? Because they saw the water coming. And, and, and all the adults who knew anything or were educated anything about the demon worship, the wave came and swept them out to sea. And some of the children in the boats who were too young to know anything about that demon worship culture, they were the only ones, not all those children survived either under them boats. But there was enough of them to survive, survive a hundred foot wave in a little boat, in a little pocket, air bubble pocket. That's God. Survive. And when they, in the aftermath, they was the only one, ones living on the island. So when the rescuers came to the island to rescue anybody that they found alive and they found these little children who are now orphans, they had to put them somewhere and they had to raise these children up and, and give them some kind of a life or whatever. Right? They happen to be Christians. Ah. <laughs> That's the, that's the truth. And I and I heard this. And, and, and the, the guy that, that made this little documentary, Lord have mercy on his soul, because, you know, he was all felt, he felt heartbroken that these children didn't know anything about their demonic worship, the, the, their old culture of worshiping demons. So he felt obligated to go back over there and, and, and reteach the reach teach them how to worship demons because he didn't think it was right that they become Christians now. That was what the documentary was. And and of course he made his documentary and you know the world eats that up. Oh, he's teaching them how to do their culture back and all this other kind of stuff. Because there's always somebody, there's always somebody that, that don't recognize an act of God. How a wave gonna come? See, 
the Apostle Paul and them couldn't go to these places and, and, and teach anything about Christianity, but but God sent a wave up, knocked all those people off. It, same thing. You know, Hurricane Katrina, the, the, the tsunami that hit Japan. Sometimes these things happen because there's somebody, there's some people there that are so reluctant to repent and turn away from the from the things that that Revelations chapter 22 says to turn away from. Their culture, their history is so steeped into idol worship that there's just no human being on the planet that's going to influence them to change. And then God has to step in. And you see, he, he's no respect of a color or anything like that, a race. God has to step in and do something so that there be a remnant of people, somebody that the remnant left over going to learn about Jesus Christ one way or the other. So God has a way of letting people know. I mean, if, if you go out and preach to somebody and they don't want to, Except what you got to say, just remember Paul on the road to Damascus. He was out killing Christians. and All you can do is just pray for those people that they have their road to Damascus experience. Something that will turn them away from being so reluctant to repent and wanting to be in heaven. Yes, it's sad to say. If, it, if you go to somebody participating in any one of these sins mentioned and you tell them, you know, I love you enough to want to see you and me in heaven, both in heaven together. But it's going to require that you repent and turn away from these, your wicked activity, whatever, your sinful activity, whatever it may be. Whether it be homosexuality, worshiping tarot cards, having sex without being married, or whatever it says right here. Living some, some kind of lie, deceit, being some type of a murderer, some type of an idol worshiper. You have you are of another religion that's not that's not Christianity, that's not saying that's not saying that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior of your life. When the master comes back with the clouds, and everybody can see it, and the whole world can see it, if you never repent, he's not taking you with him. But I love you enough to come out here not knowing how your response is gonna be. Knowing that you might want to kill, you might come to hate me, kill me, persecute me, get me fired, whatever, I don't know. <laughs> try to get me fired, try to get me to be homeless out on the street. Let's see if your God going to save you now kind of thing. You know, I, I don't know. I would hope that everybody I go to would say, maybe I'm living in a dream world. This is Daryl's Dream Ministry. Uh, I'm living in a dream where I would hope people would say, you know, thank you for showing me what I've always been asking. Lord, what is it that I'm supposed to be turning away from? I want to be right before you. Thank you for showing me that. And there will be people doing that too, of course. But it is sad to say that people were getting arrested, having their children fed to dogs in arenas in the first century church for preaching this very same thing turn away from these things because because the more people who turn away from it the more people who are in heaven with Jesus Christ and this world is so messed up that 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 message would cause somebody reluctant to repent to want to hurt you or harm you just like Cain killed Abel though you know what did God tell Cain if you repent and do the right thing I'll bless you too but then, did Cain accept that no he went and killed Abel thinking he if he could kill Abel then then everything he, he that was his method. He didn't do it the way God said. If, if, if he had listened to God, then there wouldn't be no problem, right? But Cain thought, you know, the best way to 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 get over is to, to kill Abel. And th there's gonna be people who don't want this message to get out, surprisingly enough. Of course there's going to be people. You tell them that God don't want us to do that if we want to make it into heaven. And they're going to be full of the devil and say, Oh, no, no, that's not true. You lying. You crazy. 
don't waste your time with him. He lying. He crazy. He this. He that. Or whoever preaches the message besides me. He lying. He crazy. This, that, that, and the other. And, and <clears throat> it is sad to say that, you know, many, many, many people will be locked outside because, not because of the color of your skin, not because <clears throat> uh, you were hated or anything like that. It's simply because you chose, it's your own fault, you chose not to repent from, from the things that, that Jesus calls all of us to repent from. Or if I don't make it into heaven, it's because I chose not to repent from the things that he called me to repent from. So now with that, I'm going to, I'm going to end it here as Enjoy the rest of y'all Friday night doing whatever the Lord leads you to do with the Friday night. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now in the sweet name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to once again preach and um, lift up your name as Alpha and Omega and preach the gospel, the true gospel that needs to be preached in order that more people would come and uh, humble themselves and repent and turn away from their wicked ways and be healed and be be born again and blessed by you. Thank you for giving me once again another opportunity. I pray that everyone listening would be encouraged to take this same message and share it with other brothers and sisters or with other people um, that they know that might be seeking answers to why their lives are, are turning out the way they are and wanting to be and, and wanting to really know what it means to be belong to you. So I pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank all of you for watching. Thank you. God bless you. And thank all of you for listening. Thank you. God bless you.